it's going to be very important to acknowledge what your authority is, right? I mean, I will start by saying that the first authority that this references is actually from uh, May 11th of 1974. Uh, the second one it references is from May 11th of 1977. And then the point being is, I'm sorry, the first one was from May 15th of 1974. The second one is from May 11th of 1977. I was born on May 15th, 1977. At least that's what the official documents say. In May uh, 15th of 1974, there was publication of an article regarding a piece of legislation that was then pending before Congress uh, regarding certificates. And the use of certificates through Treasury in terms of how to regulate um, savings and loans institutions. <coughs> When I found this, it referred to something that I had encountered at the beginning of 2018. And on January 3rd in 2018, there was a publication in the Wall Street Journal. There is an author at the Wall Street Journal whose regular uh, beat, it seems, is reporting on treasury issues and notices. He does other work as well. But the I, thing about him is he has the same last name as somebody who was a command officer in the United States Marine Corps when I was going to high school. When I saw this information in the paper, I understood that at that time, uh, January of 2018, you know, there were major issues, uh, treasury issues that were going on for that week that were being set up in connection with deals that had been set up on me and my high school class. I graduated from Quantico High School, the class of 1995. It was a very small class. There were less than 40 people. If I recall correctly, there were 34 of us, uh, 32 to 34 of us. And at that time, at the beginning of 2018, my understanding is somebody was using that specific week of treasury issues to speculate on me and the people with whom I was in class when I was in high school. Now, I was the high school treasurer my senior year. And one of the things this high school treasurer had to do was preside over the accounting of the, in, the money that had been raised for the year for the annual senior class trip at the end of the year. I was a part of the accounting in regarding to that trip and there was planning for the trip. That year they did something that had not been done before. But when everybody else in the class went on the senior class trip, I did not go with them. I instead went to Chicago. I had been accepted at the University of Chicago. So I took that time frame and I flew out to Chicago to set up my accommodations and to uh, confirm a job so that when school was over, I could go out there after graduation and start working before college. And it was me as one person and everybody else who went on the class trip. Now, my understanding is that there may have been one or two people that didn't go on the class trip. There may have been a number of people who didn't go on the class trip, but a majority, if not uh, the rest of the class, did go. They went whitewater rafting. And I this, did not know anything about what happened in the trip. They did not speak with me about it because I was in Chicago at the time. I had no understanding. I had no reason to believe that there was anything implied by this, especially that there might be some sort of long-term deal that was being set up on high school seniors. And that by virtue of my role as a class treasurer, somehow somebody was going to assign me a special role. I especially didn't expect that they would be assigning me a special role as a nonprofit or as some tax deductible entity. That's more than 25 years later, apparently was still expected to yield in connection with those deals. And that's what I understand happened. Now, I had the original Wall Street Journal from that time frame that had that information in it. And shortly after that, I started developing a spreadsheet. My understanding was that based upon those treasury issues, as well as what I had been already documenting in terms of what I called securities fraud, including how correlations with my life and the life of members of my immediate family were connected to major announcements, not only on significant uh, bond issues, including bond issues involving places that none of us had ever been to, but also in connection with bond issues that were connected to organizations or entities that had also been a part of litigation, including in connection with allegation and confirmation of pension fraud. And in the course of this, uh, when I started making timelines, I started realizing that me and my family and things that had happened in my family were directly connected to dates and issues related to municipal bonds. And it, it looked at the time that it was increasing. That somebody had taken things connected specifically to my mother's medical treatment, which was extensive. 
and was using benchmarks connected to my mother and my mother's family in order to set up these major deals, including in connection with bond issues for municipalities she'd never been to. She'd never even received medical treatment there. Let's put it that way. And my grandfather, my mother's father, I knew had at some point worked at the Treasury. And my uncle had also worked at the Treasury, but they were also military veterans. And my concern was that somebody was attempting to defraud me and my family and was literally trafficking me and my entire family in connection with these major deals associated with all of these bonds. And that's when I started tracking it and finding that I understand now these bond issues that were using my identity go all the way back to the time I was born. And that indeed, me being allowed to go to college where I did at the time I did was predicated upon an 18-year deal associated with a municipal bond that was set up the month I was born and, I believe, used to also contrive the events associated with somebody I met at college who happened to be from that area. My entire life, somebody had already predetermined my entire life was to be allowed to be used and somebody else's muni portfolio and or how those muni bonds were allowed to be leveraged in connection with other security deals including i understand very significant long-time hedge funds associated with political campaigns for office and it's not just me there are a number of people right now in congress who have identities very similar to people i went to high school with i can't contact any of those people i went to high school with the last time I was able to make direct contact with somebody I went to high school with who happens to work for the United States government, we got cut off after I sent him a very vital piece of information that had national security implications for which he personally was actually in a position to be able to respond. But somebody has contrived to disappear. Whatever they set up on the class of 1995 from Quantico High School. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care if every single other person in that class agreed to it. They were minors when this was set up. And because you decided you were going to put me in the specific and special fiduciary role you did, based on me being a high school treasurer, I am not going to authorize anything you set up on us for the last 25 years. I don't care who it's for. You have already had more than enough time to do your due diligence. Rather than sabotaging us and threatening us, including with violent acts of reprisal that result in the deaths of people in your own country. It doesn't really seem to matter to you, and I will let you know it does not matter to me who else internationally you leverage our exploitation on. If they're willing to do the same thing to their own people, well then that tells all of us something about the content of your character and if we allow it then that reflects on us and that is not our character now when i found this i began a process where i started documenting and organizing what i understood to be these moments of fraud involving me specifically and understood that there was a nascent process that i was developing um, and was intending to move forward on whereby one could track and could allow for what I did not have the vocabulary for at the time, but later developed a process whereby bundled transactions could be disaggregated as necessary were there to be an identification of an act of securities fraud, including securities fraud that was attempting to you know, use the intangible property or the human capital of somebody who was operating at or uh, accessed, uh, accessible to a level of risk that was not appropriate for that bundle. And this is what happens all the time, is you get something at a very high level of security that has no place in what you're trying to do. And you bundle that on so that it can clear all the illegal deals you got in that bundle. This has been going on for years. And this is why and how a lot of people have been intentionally busted down, have been intentionally downgraded. And have been attempted for sabotage, including in processes whereby they are subjected to actual biological and electronic weapons so that they will be compelled to receive medical treatment that has been fraudulently misrepresented and then set up deals on them that literally physically torture them in order to accomplish somebody else's financial deals. Now, not so ironically, when I got to Dallas, I did not have this paper anymore. It had been stolen with other evidence. But they had an archive. They used to have an archive at the Dallas Public Library. 
It's a public library. There are bonds, presumably, involving public obligation associated with that library. That means that all of the material in that library is a collateral on that library. And so when you start removing things from that library and culling it, you're defrauding those bonds because you're defrauding the people. That does not belong to any sponsor. That doesn't even belong to the city. It belongs to the people you've used as collateral along with the facility to get that bond. You don't have a right to remove the archives for any reason. You certainly don't have the right to remove the archives and then say, well, nobody wanted them and you're not we're not allowed to give them to the public, so we had to destroy them. You're not allowed to do that. Apparently, since the library opened on May 4th of 2021, that's exactly what happened in the year the people were not allowed in the library. And so they removed the archives from the New York Times. The New York Times, for the date of that article in the Wall Street Journal, had a very specific kind of presentation of information. And among the many things it discussed was an article it had. It was either on the July, uh, January 3rd or January 4th. It was identified with an organization that was led by a man named Andrew Thiel. There was a housing organization or a housing uh, an investment fund that he operated that was seeking to accomplish within a finite period of time coming up, up to $850 million worth of real estate investment in specific areas. This article was published concurrent to the time frame when the Wall Street Journal was publishing that information connected to what I understood to be someone's effort to try to speculate on people I went to high school with in 1995 and before. Now, that archive's not available anymore. The microfiche that had that information, which was the, Easter, uh, the Eastern edition, of the New York Times, it's not available anymore. But there were other articles on that day. $850 million had a very specific and particular meaning in January of 2018. I would appreciate it if somebody could immediately make available the microfiche from the month of January of 2018 regarding the Eastern edition of the New York Times and confirm and or provide paper copies of the Eastern edition of the New York Times from the first week of January in 2018. I know what was supposed to be in that issue. I know what other articles were published concurrent to it. I know how some of those articles that were in the microfiche version of the Eastern edition got translated. Is that what's going on right now? How many 850s have been flipped in connection with that specific public notice of intent to invest? I believe this is an absolutely relevant and immediate question. My understanding is that it, shortly thereafter, in 2018, there were trials that resulted in orders connected to an operation, and I say operation, that provides insurance on municipal bonds that alleged that certain municipal bonds it insured had defaulted. I don't believe it was that easy. I believe they were intentionally orchestrated, mischaracterizations of obligation, and there was willful intent to defraud engaged in the analysis of their financial performance, and it was intentionally orchestrated to further a completely unconstitutional and unconscionable political agenda. That would have been for the second week of February of 2018. It might also behoove whoever it is that would be responding, as I would appreciate you doing as forthrightly and quickly as possible, to provide any information, either paper copies or microfiche available regarding the Eastern edition of the New York Times for the month of February as well. Thank you very much.